Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we're going to discuss the wild and dynamic astrological energies from August 14th until August 21st, as we have many transiting aspects unfolding over this time period, including the exact square between Jupiter in Gemini and Saturn retrograde in Pisces at 17 degrees. We're going to see Mercury re-enter Leo. The sun in Leo squares Uranus now at 27 degrees of Taurus. Plus, we have a very powerful Aquarius full moon. So this is a week to buckle up buttercup and try not to fall off your unicorn because there will be a lot of activations unfolding and acceleration of communications, announcements, truth and revelations. Shocks and surprises are certainly on the docket. And you could be feeling pushed by the universe to step into a new level of truth, empowerment, spiritual strength, and higher levels of responsibility. There's a lot happening at once. And these energies are going to be working with you more personally if they are impacting your astrology chart, especially your personal planets. The personal planets create your own energetic recipe, your sense of self, understanding your needs, your desires, and what your personal identity is composed of in this lifetime. When the transiting planets are working with outer planets, then you are making some bigger changes and more pivotal revelations might be arising within you. You might have some clearer understandings about what you need to choose next or move towards. There could also be discomfort in this energy that is requiring you to consciously assess and look at areas of your life to determine, is this what I really want? Is this what works for me now? Is this where I want to go in the future? Am I standing in line for the life I want to experience and manifest? Or am I wasting time, energy, and effort in things that don't matter to me? You might have a powerful realization that stops you in your tracks and requires you to make adjustments, be brutally honest with yourself, and get clear on what you're really doing with your life. Yes, it is that big, it is that significant, and we're gonna go through these energies here in today's show. Now, I wanna get to the astrology, but at the end of this podcast, I do have three announcements to share with you if you want to stick around and listen to those. So let's begin with August 14th, where we have Mars conjunct Jupiter in Gemini at 16 degrees, the same day that Mercury re-enters Leo. Mercury is, of course, retrograde and returning to the astrological sign of self-expression, passion, courageously taking a risk of some sort, standing in the strength of your light, and reconnecting you to a firm understanding that perhaps you've been mulling over as Mercury has been in Virgo. Now, Mercury returning to Leo opens up more that you're really feeling that you have to get out. This can be very fiery. It can be frustration. It can be anger. When that is tempered and used consciously, this can be a powerful self-assertion of what is happening with you or within you and also allowing you to reconnect to what is coming up in your heart and what you're feeling strongly. This Mercury retrograde can be very boastful in Leo, can have too much pride and lack humility, can also be quite short-sighted. So as Mercury re-enters Leo, the same day that Mars is a catalyst for Jupiter and Gemini, there's some big understandings and revelations that are ready to come out. And all three of these are connected to communications with Mars and Jupiter in Gemini and Gemini ruled by this Mercury retrograde. So 
the message here could be that you have new breakthroughs on what you're ready to do and put into action. Because Mars is a catalyst. There's an energized dynamic now that takes it out of the mind, out of the thought process, and now you're ready to do something with it. You're ready to send the email, to speak up, to follow through on that brilliant big idea or plan. There's energized communications here, but they can be over the top. So there is the need to temper them, to harness them, and to remain conscious about what you're really saying and how, how you are expressing what you need in a way that can be fully received. Because when this energy is too big, too angry, or too overwhelming to receive, then it can lack effectiveness, lack credibility, and instead just sound like a bunch of over-the-top needless drama. So stay mindful of your own expressions, especially August 14th, but also throughout this next week because the energy does play out here as we move into August. But on a positive note, be ready for those breakthroughs and a greater, firmer stance on what you need to say and how to do so. August 15th brings us the Sun in Leo trining Chiron retrograde in Aries at 23 degrees, as well as Mars in Gemini squaring Saturn retrograde in Pisces at 17 degrees. So with this Mars now squaring Saturn, there is a checking in point here on the effectiveness of what is being expressed. Is it responsible? Is it allowing you to take the spiritual high ground? There is an elevation that Saturn in Pisces requires, requires us to be aware of our own patterns, of what we've been moving through on our own paths, aware of how we are masters of our energy and how are you showing up in the world, fully owning your own mastership. Because as Mars in Gemini squares this Saturn, Mars in Gemini can be a child. It can be a tantrum. It can be thrashing around just to release energy and not getting anywhere when this Mars squares Saturn. So look at what is rising up in you that is coming from a younger version of yourself. And this dynamic between Mars and Saturn can certainly bring up father issues, authority issues, people that you have to answer to or report back to, authorities in any area of life. Uh, This could certainly be getting a speeding ticket or a traffic violation with that Mars and Gemini having to answer to an officer. This can show you what has been unresolved in a father-child dynamic. And if you are the father or you are the mentor or authority figure here, then you might be experiencing those childish antics or someone who wants to run right over you and do it their way and they don't heed with caution and they don't understand perhaps everything that's involved. So this will be a good day, August 15th, to stay mindful of what triggers you, where you are impatient, uh, where you blast off at someone and then realize, oops, maybe I could have handled that better. It's also a day to sit with what you're truly feeling and thinking and to not make commitments from that energy. Instead, if you're resisting something, you're not happy and you want to take it out on another, the energy says not so fast. That could have unintended consequences and that could lead you down a path where you don't want to place your energy. Also on the same day, August 15th, Sun and Leo trining Chiron retrograde in Aries is going to give you healing insights into your gifts and self-acceptance. Loving what you're good at, what you're capable of, understanding that we don't always move as fast as we like through some experiences or situations. Now, these are both in fire signs. And so there's a need here to activate the motivation, to put energy forward and to move ahead. But Chiron Retrograde is asking you to also consider where you've been, what you're already aware of, that you're improving in yourself, how to actually direct that fiery, passion towards yourself in a loving way. 
to be more loving towards what you're good at, what you enjoy, what you want to do, and to not worry so much about what others think or what their opinions are or what their perspectives might be. This can be an energy of not only greater self-acceptance, but more self-confidence. So allow this to be a day, August 15th, that you strengthen in who you are, in your self-identity, that you feel brighter in what you're good at, and you don't hold back your own light. Now that is happening at 23 degrees. So 23 degrees of Leo, 23 degrees of Aries. And there could be a healing remedy of some kind that comes through and gives you exactly the message you're needing. Now all during this week, we are experiencing Jupiter and Gemini squaring Saturn retrograde in Pisces at 17 degrees. Jupiter reaches 17 degrees of Gemini on August 16th. And this begins the energetic tightening of the energy with Saturn already at 17 degrees of Pisces. Now the square is exact August 19th, but August 16th to August 24th is the time span when they are in a direct connection at 17 degrees. And so the pressure increases. There is a tension requiring growth. You are being asked by the universe to trust yourself, your ideas, your voice, your communications in a new way that is part of your spiritual purpose and your spiritual path. You could feel that you're being called to do something connected to your spiritual growth themes in this lifetime and that Saturn is not letting you off the hook. Saturn is not letting this go just yet. There's a need to step forward, to step up. And Jupiter in Gemini has been growing in confidence, faith, and trust that you're qualified to do so. And so this inner tension requiring growth has perhaps energized you at times and then depleted you, brought up a lot of questions, a lot of uncertainties, A lot of things perhaps that you've been working through energetically, tossing back and forth in your mind, trying to figure out how do I do this? How can this be effective? What's the best approach? What do I need to say? You might also have insights into how this current lesson or challenge is directly related to karma, soul contracts, soul purpose, spiritual growth. Basically, the unseen energies that you're feeling and sensing that you're being asked to do something with consciously, to be aware of the power of words and to allow that Jupiter and Gemini to give you an uplifting perspective on the benefits, on the importance of speaking your truth and how to maintain belief in yourself that you can do this, you're ready for this, whatever this might be for you. Because there is a squeeze here. It's a squeezing pressure to alchemize your intuitive self with your mental self and to combine the energies in a way that helps you bust through any of the blockages, heaviness, or self-doubt that you might be feeling. So basically all this week, that's what's happening in the background And you could feel it come forward as being a very big thing in your world or in your life, especially if you have planets or points at 17 degrees of the mutable signs. The mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces. You are feeling this quite intensely and there will be some type of crescendo on August 19th, when the square is exact and we have the Aquarius full moon. So I'll get to that in just a moment, but we're not done yet here with the big energies of this week because now we're going to look at August 18th. So August 18th brings about a dynamic Mercury retrograde in Leo. There is active energy here as Mercury squares Uranus in Taurus at 27 degrees and then makes a conjunction to the sun in Leo at 26 degrees. This is a big day of communications happening that could be surprising, shocking, perhaps blindside you. But at a higher level, there are breakthroughs here where you could feel that you're ready to express what you've been holding back. 
Now, you might be thinking, well, why is that if Mercury is retrograde? Because Mercury retrograding back into Leo has already been working through something. You've already been contemplating it. It's already been in your energy and with the direct contact to both Uranus and the sun in the same day, there are revelations here around things you didn't know or other people didn't know about you. There can be big announcements, declarations, information shared, yet it's not the full story. It's not all the details, but it's made to look good. It's presented in a way that others are meant to admire it, subscribe to it or believe in it. This can be an impulsive Mercury retrograde in Leo that just has to say something, get the energy out of the head and do so in a way that doesn't consider the long term or what else might be contributing to the narrative. Mercury is highly active here, August 18th. And as the energy is also in play during the Aquarius full moon the next day, there's going to be a time period here where you could have a lot of communications, ideas, changes in plans, shifts that are required. Mercury does rule our every day and how we go about our lives, what we get done, our errands, how we approach our immediate environments. And there's going to be surprises. It will be necessary to be flexible, which is not easy easy for these fixed signs. The ability to be flexible, to have a plan B, to have a backup, uh, to also not respond or react is going to be favorable, but probably not so easy. Not when you have the fiery Leo working with the unpredictable Uranus in Taurus. Something has to be said. There's a restlessness here, a recklessness too. This Mercury Squaring Uranus can be unintended consequences, can be going off the handle. Um, there can be a sense of, I'm just going to tear this all down because I just can't take it. I just can't stand it. And there's something here to look at and understand if this energy is coming up for you, especially if you have planets or points around 26 and 27 degrees of the fixed signs. So the fixed signs being Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, August 18th and 19th are very big in terms of how this energy is being forced out, is being forced to the surface, and it can be a lot to manage or to feel. The nervous system can be overwhelmed. There could even be a self-combustion that occurs. But at the higher levels, the higher levels of frequencies and energies, we are becoming so much more self-aware and conscious of the energies moving through us, running through us, that I also feel that it's going to be important to not overly self-identify with one experience or one event, one situation, whatever it might be in this lifetime. Because what I'm seeing around the Leo energy here is that the trigger coming up is reminding you that you're a soul. You're a soul on a journey. You're not just in this lifetime embodying one ego, one body, one brain. There is an elevation here to understand the role you're playing in this lifetime. And roles are associated with Leo, but it's looking at the higher intention of that, where even if you feel like, okay, I'm in this identity in this lifetime, I'm so much more than this. And if you can connect to that understanding and that level of consciousness, it will help you rise above the mundane, the present moment, or anything going on around you to see it as all the roles are temporary. How would you experience the energies if it didn't feel so personal, if it didn't feel like it was just about this lifetime and this period of time? It reminds me of a passage written by Shakespeare that goes, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. If you look at this from the soul perspective, we choose the part we want to play in this lifetime and we can always choose to upgrade, to elevate, to switch it up and go in a new direction. And this is the week that can support that driving intention. If you're really looking to do so, 
If something isn't working for you in your life, if you don't like a part of yourself, if there's areas where you're unsatisfied or you want more or you're ready to simply change the role that you feel you're in, this can be that catalyst. This can push you into new ways of being yourself, but from a higher perspective. And those could be some of the downloads and understandings you receive as well on August 18th with this Mercury retrograde in Leo, squaring Uranus and Taurus at 27 degrees, and then conjunct the sun in Leo at 26 degrees. Also on the same day, Venus and Virgo squares Jupiter and Gemini at 17 degrees, and you could realize something you don't like. You don't want this anymore. It's not working. What's the next solution? Where can this be improved? So here we have a problem solving Venus and Virgo on a mission. She wants new approaches, new ways of figuring out what is best for her and how to make improvements. This is also where Venus in Virgo is now in the mutable T-square configuration. She makes an exact opposition to Saturn in Pisces, August 18th and 19th, and she's also feeling that square to Jupiter and Mars in Gemini. So Venus in Virgo can actually be very overwhelmed. This can all be too much for this part of your energy or for the part of you that wants things to be compartmentalized. Just make it simple, just make it clear. Yet it's all perhaps feeling messy and chaotic, over the top, too much, too much to think about. So Venus in Virgo is best taking a step back, relaxing into what she needs to care for her energy, how to take care of her body and her mind, how to make sure she's getting sleep, she's nourishing herself, And she's not letting the overwhelm take her away from her grounded, true sense of self. So this Venus in Virgo can be struggling here with the dynamics of this week. And the reminder is you don't have to figure it out right now. In fact, you probably won't. The mutable T-square is about different choices, change, new ideas, new options. It looks like a lot of corn kernels popping up into popcorn and you catch one and then there's another popcorn (laughs) that flies out of the pan. So it looks like there is literally a lot popping up that can be hard to manage or wrangle or catch even. And the Venus in Virgo most likely wants to walk away and say, I don't want to deal with all this. But there's a part of her that has to because it's affecting her everyday life. It's affecting her daily energy. And you might find that you have to shift things up to take care of yourself better and to be very discerning around where your energy goes. And that is a strength of Venus and Virgo. Now, when she opposes Saturn in Pisces at 17 degrees, this also sets up some type of mentorship, authority figure, father figure dynamic. So just like Mars squared Saturn and couldn't get what he wanted right away, Venus opposing Saturn is a denial, a no, a decline, and the bigger message is it's just not the right time. It's not the right time for this. And so you could be making cutbacks, Also saying no to people, invitations, opportunities, just realizing I don't have enough energy for this right now. I'm also seeing the energy of this T-square a bit like sorting and folding laundry, where you're putting things into different piles, trying to organize it, trying to keep it straight. And then here comes the dog or the cat all over your nicely kept piles, messing things up, getting hair on everything and pushing some things to the floor. So just keep in mind that it's going to be a week to simply stay adaptable, stay open. Don't allow your energy to go too much into any one thing because that alone can be destabilizing where you feel you're spread too thin. Maybe that's something you realize this week. There's too much going on in my life. There's too much happening here. I can't manage all this. Maybe the kids have too many activities or your calendar is too full and you don't have enough time to get caught up on priorities. Life is being resorted right now. Life is meant to be resorted so that you can see what's going to work better for you and be a better fit that you didn't even realize before. So people are going to be getting rid of things, saying no, 
declining, pulling back. And of course, with Mercury retrograde, we already expect those kinds of changes, but this is more substantial. These are substantial life changes. We say, you know, we can't do that anymore. I'm, I'm done with that commitment or that activity. I don't want to put energy into it. There's going to be new information and opportunities that come forward that you perhaps feel a strong yes to, even though you don't know if it's going to work. You don't know if it's really going to happen. So again, there isn't a lot that's settled. There's a lot that's in motion. So remain flexible, remain adaptable. See this as a buffet. I'm getting the visual of a buffet where you walk down the line and you're sampling different things and you're saying, no, that looks disgusting. Wow, that looks incredible. This is my favorite dish. Maybe I'll try that. A bite of this won't hurt. It's a week of sampling. It's a week of staying light. Stay lighter with yourself, with others. Expect things to change and know that as they do shift and change, you will also be redirected to other suitable options and possibilities. Now I'm getting the visual of a kaleidoscope. And as that kaleidoscope shifts and changes, so do the colors and the shapes, it expands and compresses. I feel that that is the cosmic energy of this time period. And if you're willing to work with it intentionally, you're going to ride these changes and feel how beautiful it is, almost hysterical, Almost like, wow, this is a crazy roller coaster. I'm kind of having fun with this. I can just let it be what it is and not try to control it or to be too attached to an outcome or a development. And so this leads us as well to the August 19th Aquarius full moon. The Aquarius full moon has the moon at 27 degrees of Aquarius opposing the sun in Leo at 27 degrees and both exactly squaring Uranus in Taurus at 27 degrees. And the last time that Uranus was at 27 degrees of Taurus was late 1941 into early 1942. Now, late 1941 is when the U.S. entered into World War II after Pearl Harbor was attacked by the Japanese on December 7th, 1941. And the reason why this is significant is because this particular Aquarius full moon is exactly conjunct the USA's chart with the moon at 27 degrees of Aquarius signifying that in mundane astrology, the moon is the people, the public, families, and homes. And with Uranus now squaring that point in the USA chart, we're moving into a big change collectively in the country. This Uranus at 27 degrees of Taurus is now also squaring the USA's natal Pluto at 27 Capricorn. And we've been talking about that Pluto return energy since about 2020 or so. So now we have Uranus in Taurus powerfully activating the USA's chart and affecting us at a deeper emotional level. Now, I'm certainly not saying that this means we're moving into a specific situation or scenario. But what I am saying is that now we're entering new territory that that will be pivotal. This Aquarius full moon is going to be a very big deal globally, especially into this the rest of 2024. And it may come on quickly and suddenly. There might be more drastic changes to the financial market, the economics of our time where we are seeing unemployment rise, we're seeing more inflation and greater uncertainty in the stock markets. So there are going to be more surprises and shifts that will affect families, the housing market, investments, interest rates, resources, including natural resources of the earth, which is what Taurus rules, and perhaps other destabilizing events that we feel personally. So on the bigger scale, this Aquarius full moon has a more significant ripple effect than most full moons, and primarily because Uranus, now at 27 degrees of Taurus, is opening up the changes that have been delayed or propped up it's going to reveal what has been faked, uh, what has been simply staged or propaganda. 
So in addition to how you feel the energy personally of the Aquarius full moon at 27 degrees in your chart, whichever house that is, there are bigger cycles in play here that are now going to break open and come to the surface. I believe it was back in 2022 that I was sharing with you messages about the financial market, economics, saving and spending, and how it's like a Jenga tower. It's rocking and rolling. And at some point, it very likely can all tumble down and crash. So again, a heads up that these are themes that the astrology suggests And that the Aquarius full moon could certainly be a trigger for more unexpected developments in these areas of our lives. And to be quite frank with you, it's difficult to share this without wanting it to create fear, which is never my intention. It's also why I share with you these messages when they come through, because I feel they come through to help us plan, to help us prepare, to help us understand what's around the corner and what's around the bend. So keep in mind that the intention is to always give you a heads up so that you can assess what your family needs, what you need, uh, what would be good next steps here, and how to remain in your power as big world changes continue to unfold during this big cycle. So it's certainly a game-changing week, and you can be feeling that already. It could be difficult sleeping. You could feel disrupted in your energy in some way. One of the best things to do is to keep it simple for yourself, to return to your daily energy practices, your guided meditations, to calm the mind, to calm your emotions and your energy field, to understand how safe you are at a soul level and at a personal level, and to remind yourself that big advancements are possible when energies are bigger. Greater manifestations, more inspired creations can come through. You could have new clarity around what matters to you now, what you want to do with your life, And that alone can be these beautiful gifts that we don't expect, but that keep our energy high and keep us in a place of trusting that we have what we need. You will always figure it out. You will always know what you need to do. You will always have an answer or options that present themselves, especially when you request it from the universe. When you request to see the next best step, show me what I need to know now. Tell me what I need to know now and then stay open to how those messages arrive. They can come through any means. They can be rather unexpected but delightful and you can energetically feel that's the message I was meant to receive. That's the answer. I was seeking, even if it doesn't come on blue ink on white paper. So stay open to the universe is ready to give you more of what will support you now. So be sure to ask, be sure to make it known. And even before you go to sleep at night, ask for that support or that help, especially if you are someone who deeply connects to your dream state messages or other messages from the astral realm or your multidimensional self. Now, after the August 19th Aquarius full moon, we have a few quieter days for integration and calm, for rebalancing and reminding ourselves that we've got what it takes here to move through this part of our journey. The energy will continue to feel calmer and more grounded as the sun enters Virgo, August 22nd at 10.55 a.m. That's Eastern time. On next Wednesday's podcast, we'll be talking about those energies even more as we continue to move through August. Now, I mentioned I had three quick announcements to share with you. The first one is that we've been able to increase the number of people who can come to the Shine Your Success Frequency Retreat in October. Rob Thomas and I are combining human design and astrology to assist you in your business development. Rob and I first started this back in 2019. We created an online course that allowed you to see more of your human design and your astrology together. And it was such a fascinating topic to explore Because it's so personal that we started to plan retreats and workshops based on this information for you. But as you know, 2020 happened and so our plans were delayed. So we're really happy to finally be doing this work in person. 
since that was our intention starting back in 2019. And if you were in that online course, this is the next level of application of human design and your astrology chart. So you can still sign up and join us because we were able to get more rooms at the Art of Living Retreat Center. And I will put the link below this podcast. It's also on my website, mollymccord.online under events. The second announcement I have is that I was just on the Reiki Lifestyle podcast. You can find it on YouTube or on any of your favorite podcast platforms where I spoke with Colleen and Robin about the upcoming eclipses. And we look at the energetics of the first Pisces lunar eclipse on September 17th and 18th. And then we discussed the last Libra eclipse on October 2nd. So please check that out. You can find the conversation on their YouTube channel. Again, it's Reiki Lifestyle. And then my third announcement to share with you is that my newest book called Soul Growth Astrology, a workbook for realizing your heart's true desires is now available for pre-order. And when you pre-order it, you can then register for an exclusive online astrology masterclass with me. And this masterclass will take place November 21st with a Q&A portion. And I will be teaching you more about what to look for in your own astrology chart as well as how this new book is designed to support you in evolving the energies in your chart. So the book comes out December 3rd, but we're doing a free online class beforehand to give you insights and a sneak peek into what you'll be understanding about yourself. This book focuses on each of the 12 astrology signs and what they're learning throughout their rising consciousness. It's designed to be a book that you apply to multiple planets in your chart. This is not a sun sign astrology book. This is where you look at, okay, if my Mercury is in Libra, you would then go to the Libra chapter where I describe the energies, give you a client story to make more of the dominant themes clear. And then there are little exercises and journal prompts and ways for you to sit with the energy to be more intentional around how to work with this part of yourself. And the exercises are simple. They're not these long, extensive things that we forget to incorporate. They're designed to be easy to understand practices that you can apply for your own best and highest good. And that's how it's a workbook. There's actually no writing space inside the book. So you would need to be writing on your own journal or page or whatever. But this is designed to be your active participation in your own energy that will assist you in what you're evolving in yourself. I'm very excited about the book. I really, really hope it's supportive of where you're at. And I also want to thank the amazing Teresa Reed for her foreword of the book. Uh, She has been a noted astrologer for decades, and I'm truly honored that she wrote the foreword and connects with the messages here. So the book is available for pre-order, and then you want to sign up to join the Zoom Masterclass on November 21st. Yes, a replay will be available and you can get all the information at hierophantpublishing.com. Search for my name or Soul Growth Astrology and that's where you register. I'll also put the link below the podcast. As always, thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I'll be back every Monday and Wednesday with a new podcast episode. Wishing you a beautiful, bright, evolving Aquarius full moon, and I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Take good care.